today when I was at Staples picking up push pins for the things that are behind me right now. I'm basically stretching paper. The man that checked me out asked if I was feeling good today. I said, yeah, pretty good. How about you? He said he's feeling grateful. Now this could have gone right over my head, but for some reason on this Monday morning, I felt the need to discuss. He asked me after that question why I was just feeling good and why not great. What about my day was not making it a great day? And I just said, I don't know, just trying to get through the day and explain this project that I had to do about stretching this paper. Well, he said, I hope the rest of the day turns around for you. He got me smiling. And the fact that he said that he's feeling grateful today made me realize that I have nothing in my life that should make me ungrateful for what I have. And I know sometimes it's hard on those Mondays when you're getting up and you're having to go do stuff. If you're having to go to work or go to school and something's really bringing you down, you have so much in your life to be grateful for. It's just so simple that somebody describing their day as they're checking you out for push pins can make you just reflect and focus in on all those things. Like I am at an art school in Chicago. It is my dream school. And the fact that I have to gesso paper should not be an annoyance to me. This is a privilege to be here. Nothing is getting in the way of that on this Monday afternoon. So for that, I should be grateful. So I think that was just a way to start off this vlog and I hope that you are smiling today and I hope that you have something in your life to be grateful for, whether that is a school that you're going to or a family member or a friend or just the fact that you are alive and breathing right now. So yeah, I'm up in the studio, just wearing a paper on this fine, lovely Monday. <laughs> does try to tell you to go gesso some paper, look them dead in the eye and say no. When you gesso paper, you have to gesso both sides. So you can't do two layers of gesso on one side and then flip it. No, you have to wait for that layer to dry, then gesso the other side, and then turn it over again, and gesso that side, and then turn it over again. And the second you try to put them nicely into a portfolio to transport them to the class that you have been told to gesso paper for, the thing gets creased in the middle and it's not even gonna look good to draw on anyways. All around gessoing paper is a no. Remember Remain positive, but don't gesso the paper. I just want to use colored pencils. We leave that that Friday. It is Wednesday. <laughs> we are starting this portion of the vlog from the top of the video because these guys got tickets. How fun! Never seen a Cubs game before. This is the New York Mets and the Cubs. Yeah, and we're in the last possible, the very last row. We got nice views both ways though. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. It's 7.50 for a hot dog up here. Might have to get one of those. I was telling them it's probably like inflated as you go up. So yeah. It's like yeah, they're like, we know that how desperate you are not to walk back up again. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So it's probably $9, but look at this view. Man, baseball, America's favorite pastime. <laughs> gessoing paper did absolutely nothing to progress the skill level of my artistry. What it did do was waste some paper out of a sketchbook that I did spend money on, so that sucked a little bit. Sometimes you have to waste paper as an artist, but sometimes you'd rather have that on creative failures that progress the 
of your future successes rather than just material studies that test out materials that you already know how to use. So most of these images that you're seeing currently are tests of which I was told to do and none of which were from my own creative doing. Except that one on the left, that one had a little bit of myself behind it. It's still not what I'd like to be doing, but it's a start. As you can see from the two in the middle, they are very similar, except one is very muddled and unappealing. Actually, they're both unappealing. After we did the charcoal material study for roughly under 45 minutes, we had to then trade papers with our neighbor and copy what they did on their material study. But I'm trying to keep an open mind of the class regardless because I am paying a lot of money to attend that class. <laughs> and she can't keep us doing material studies forever, so we'll see where we go from here. But it is now Friday. I know you've missed most of this week. I have too. It's gone by very fast. But the reason for that was because my last three weekly vlogs, they have just been at 30 minutes. For a person like me, I enjoy that. I love watching long vlogs. For most of you, I'm sure that's not your chosen preferred vlog content length of time. And I guess all that really matters is that I'm enjoying it and that I'm going to be watching these back in the future myself. But just for the sake of variety, this one is going to be shorter. <laughs> I kept out a lot of this stuff in the middle that might not be relevant or exciting to most of you. But what is exciting and what you should be excited about is Expo Chicago. It is a four day art show that happens once a year at Navy Pier. I attended this show last year myself. It was probably one of the highlights of freshman year and I guarantee it will be a highlight of sophomore year as well. It's basically this huge convention center that is stationed on Navy Pier that is filled to the brim with really expensive but quality artwork. <laughs> This place is massive. I'm talking at least about a thousand times bigger than this dorm room. Now that's not a hard thing to beat, and I'm not the best with math, but I'm pretty sure it has to be over a thousand of these put together. <laughs> you go down row after row of just really fantastic, huge and small and great and big, and those are all the same words, a variety of artwork. All these vendors come from all over the country and all over the world. So you'll see artists from California, New York, Chicago, Oklahoma probably, some place in Europe. They're from everywhere really. I know SAIC has a booth there for alumni that have graduated. It's probably not my taste, but we'll see when we get there. Also, fun story about this guy. So these are the exclusive passes that we get through the school so we don't have to pay for a four day pass, which is lovely, but I lost mine. And it turns out it was right there on the floor behind me the whole time. You see, as the year goes on, stuff starts to accumulate in places that I'd rather have it not. But it was under this and under all those pieces of paper. And last night I couldn't fall asleep because I didn't know the whereabouts of this piece of cardboard. This isn't, this isn't cardboard. So enough talk about Expo, I could just go show it to you.
fountain with the least amount of pressure in it ever. <laughs> It's gonna, I'm very grateful for it. We are thirsty at Expo. They've trapped us on this island and they're try, trying to charge us $6 for a bottle of water. <laughs> I saw school, I think. Yeah? That was <laughs> I liked Expo. You liked Expo? Expo was really cool. Favorite part? The dogs. Okay. Did you like Expo? Yeah, I liked it. Favorite part? Um, Getting water. Ooh, yeah. So that concludes Expo 2017. We'll see you guys next year for another art expo with Belle and Jackie. <laughs> Andy. Okay, bye. Do you guys want to hear a very sad story? Um, yeah, so remember when I didn't get tickets to Harry Styles at the Chicago Theater? She's up right now and it's making me the sad. Yeah, so we're just gonna pretend that Marquee isn't up a week early and ignore the fact that I might stare at it for the next, I don't know, seven days. Um, but besides the point. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore the fact that every vlog that I posted so far has mentioned Casey Neistat. Casey, if you do somehow find my channel on this little corner of the internet, I would love to meet you someday. <laughs> Casey has this video, Do What You Can't. It is linked down below. It is all about finding out what you're passionate for and breaking those boundaries and paving that way for the future that you want for yourself and progressing in whatever it is that you want to do. No matter how many times people say that you can't do something or you have no future or you're never gonna be able to do that, you have to go against it and do what you can't. That is a quote that I consistently remind myself of because I think it's just like, it's so simple, such an easy thing to remember, and it's such a staple to live by. Because if you don't do the impossible for yourself, nobody's gonna do it for you. And if you're not building your own dream, you're always going to be working towards building someone else's. So what I decided to do, and luckily what Dee allowed me to do, is make these big letters to put the quote on the inside of her door so right when we walk out, we'll see those big letters that say, do what you can't, to remind us that every time we step out that door, we are doing the impossible, or at least that's what the goal is to be doing. Do what you can't. To the haters, the doubters, my seventh grade vice principal. To everyone who's ever told anyone with a dream they can't. Keep your head down, follow the rules, do as you're told, play it safe. Wait your turn, ask permission, learn to compromise. This is terrible advice. If I were to write an autobiography, a book about my life, one title that would work would be Do What You Can't, because that idea encapsulates everything I've ever done. It's, I'm dying. Uh, my now, every time we walk out this door, do what you can't. Hey! Oh my god. <gasps> Vlog dog back. Oh! Go, Jackson, go! <laughs> You know, and it's just time for Mamma Mia, and you just have to put on your Mamma Mia hoodie to watch Mamma Mia. Um, it just happens, you know? You can dance, you can jump, have it the time of your life. Okay, we have to do two things before this vlog is over. One, we have to do the weekly quote. This week's weekly quote is, I know nothing with any certainty, but the sight of the stars makes me dream by Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh happens to be one of my favorite artists, no matter how cliche you might think that is. He's a classic, he's a legend, and I love everything that he did. That was the quote of this week because I somehow managed to put this three foot by four foot poster all the way up here on this wall um, above my desk, which is pretty, pretty high already by myself. Um, yeah, and because it is stars, I thought I would do something that went along with the stars, but was also relevant to the fact that I love all of his work, and that's just, that's a fun fact about Belle for today. Ooh, ooh, she's exposed. To wrap up Expo, basically I thought it was a good, good show this year. I think last year was better in my personal opinion. 
I'm not quite sure why, I just think I was drawn to more stuff and this year a lot of the things and the techniques and the artists were similar or the same from last year which is just a little annoying because you do want to see like a fresh take on how the art world has approached this year, sorry, on how the art world has approached this year um, and moving forward like what we're going to be doing different and what things are succeeding and just to see like the same things at this huge show over again is a little disappointing but like I said there was less stuff that I liked from last year so obviously something's changing. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would still recommend attending because it's a great show and it's great to see what people are pricing their work at, what people are making, if they're actually selling their work because you will see some things disappear. I saw a sale happen and some lady bought like this little six by eight um, gold leafed piece for $1,500. So that was pretty cool. Welcome to the hey. vlog, Dee. Haven't seen you here like for a while. I'm standing. <laughs> now we're kneeling. Okay, is there anything that you need to talk about? I've done a lot of stuff today. Yeah, true. Dee's been working on this project that's due on Wednesday. She's been making these sculptural pieces all right. All right, all right, and she's paper mache them, and you're gonna put what on top? I used to like fix walls or like furniture, like repair stuff, but I use it for making sculptures, and nice. it like adds texture and like stability. Really bulks it. it up. Yeah, it adds some weight to yeah, it. Yeah, so she's gonna put these guys on the wall. Yeah, like just like that. And there's gonna be speakers inside each one of them. Are you playing some sound of sorts? Nice. Look at this nice backdrop of do what you can't on the door. I mean, I'm always down for watching The Office. Yeah, that's what we've been doing this week. We watched The Office, we've been working. It's just been kind of a, I don't know, productive, but like not too busy week. I think that's it for this week, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and please click that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. Um, you'll be more up to date on when the vlogs are posted. If you wanna click that bell button too, <laughs> not me, but there's a button down there for post notifications if you want to like really know when I post because sometimes I tweet them, sometimes I don't. I will catch you guys next week for another weekly vlog. Bye!